Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Reapy Ron and once again we are doing another tier list for Deep Rock Galactic. This is going over the overclocks from the minigun because I have got all of the overclocks for the minigun and have tested them out. Um, some of them much more than others, but I have a rough estimation as to where I'd put each of these. So we're going to be using our uh, S to D tier, D being, well, they need some work, C being okay, B being good, A being great, and S being fantastic or overpowered. Um, so we're going to start out with the clean overclocks, go through the balanced ones, and then go to the uh, unstable overclocks. So our first overclock is a little more oomph. This one is a very straightforward perk. This gives you one more damage to your base damage of the minigun, so you go from 10 to 11, pretty nice. Uh, and you have faster spin up time by 0.2 seconds. So instead of taking uh, 0.7 seconds, you take 0.5 seconds. And yes, I am reading off the calculator here so I get all the numbers correct. A little more oomph is pretty much just everything that you want uh, with the minigun. More base damage is always good for the minigun because it increases your DPS by quite a lot since the minigun fires out so fast. And having a faster spin up time means that you're going to be fighting more often. Uh, since it's a clean overclock, it has no downside to it either, which is all around good. Um, and this one is actually really strong with the minigun. I would probably put this one up into A tier. Like, just having more damage and having a faster spin up is never a bad thing. It works well with any build that you want to go with the minigun, because it's just a straight bonus. And it's honestly probably one of the minigun's best overclocks as of right now. Uh, our next one is Thin Line Drums. This one's another clean overclock. This gives you 300 more ammunition and makes it so your cooling rate is increased by 0.5. So your minigun, if you overheat it, will uh, cool down faster. That's all around a good thing. Um, ideally, you shouldn't be overheating your minigun too often, um, barring some builds like we're going to talk about in a little bit. But if you do, cooling it down faster is nice, and having 300 additional ammunition is pretty great. You're going to be doing more damage with it because you have extra bullets. Uh, resupplies are going to give you more, so no downside again. Um, I don't know. I don't think this one's as good as a little bit more oomph, but it's still really strong just all the way around. So I'd probably put it into high B tier. All right, up next we have Burning Hell, which Burning Hell makes it when you're firing the minigun, you do uh, 20 area of effect damage per second and 8 heat uh, per second, which is the buildup of fire, to enemies within 5 meters of the muzzle of your gun. 50% uh, of this heat accumulation is the weapon's heat meter, though, so you will overheat faster. Uh, Burning Hell is actually a pretty fun one. I didn't think that this one would be as fun as it is, and it's a pretty solid option because it adds more status effects to your minigun. This can actually be really good if you're getting swarmed by grunts or by swarmers. Uh, you can still move back while you're firing it, and you'll likely light all of them on fire, killing them without too much trouble. So that's pretty good. Uh, you can light large enemies on fire with it, but that's not as consistent. Same with flying enemies. It's pretty inconsistent to light them on fire. Your minigun does overheat faster with this, which can be a bit of an issue, but even when uh, I was running this, I rarely overheated my minigun. The only times I did was when I was purposely doing it, just to see how long I could actually hold down the trigger before I needed to uh, stop. I did run this with cooling add-ons uh, with the minigun. I haven't used this one a whole lot. Uh, the two clean ones I've used much more, but Burning Hell was pretty solid, actually. Um, I enjoyed it, and it's pretty good for the minigun overall, I'd say. The overheating is a bit annoying, but I'd still probably put this into like B tier. I'm not sure if it's better than the thin line drums or about on the same level as thin line drums. All right, our next one is compact feed mechanism. This makes it so we get 800 additional ammunition. So we go from 2400 base up to 3200 base. This one's really fun if you take all the ammunition because you're going to be getting so much back from resupplies. Uh, this one does reduce your rate of fire, though. You go from having 30 rate of fire, or 30 rounds per second, to 26 rounds per second, which is honestly not all that big of a deal. I thought it would be worse than it is. You definitely have less DPS with this. Um, I just went with more of a damaging build, since I uh, did have this and more ammunition. And it still wasn't too noticeable when I was firing at large enemies or even into groups of enemies. I was still killing them at about the same rate. I could tell it was a little bit slower, but not by much. Maybe more so at longer range just because I'm not hitting my shots as often, but compact feed mechanism was actually pretty good. Like just having that huge amount of extra ammo and going with more ammo and just going with uh, damage builds was pretty good too. Um, I would probably put this one 
I think I'd put this one in the low A tier. I think it was pretty good. This one is Exhaust Vectoring. This gives you two more bullet damage, which is really good for the minigun, as we've said, but it increases your base spread with the minigun by two and a half times. So you get uh, way, you get much less accuracy out of the minigun then, which is one of the minigun's biggest strengths is that once it starts uh, ramping up, it gets very accurate. This does make it feel lots less accurate. It's not that fun to use then. Um, the more damage is kind of nice, but with the less accuracy, I feel like it's not even worth it unless you're at close range. I find this one to be pretty lacking because like, yeah, two more damage is awesome. But for two and a half times base spread, it's just, it's not worth it, I'd say. I'd probably put the venti or the vectoring into D tier. Um, I feel like it hurts the minigun more than it helps it. Uh, it's probably higher up into D tier because it does give you the bonus damage, which is kind of nice. And if you're using it only at close range, okay. Now on to the unstable minigun overclocks. We have uh, bullet hell first. Bullet hell makes it so that there's a 75% chance that a bullet uh, impacting an enemy or the terrain near an enemy can ricochet into another enemy um, within six meters of that ricochet. The downside of this is that you get three less damage per shot, which makes your DPS much lower. Um, and you have six times the base spread. So your minigun is not accurate at all. Even when it's fully up, it's still just spraying everywhere. Unless the enemy is a couple feet in front of you, you're not going to be hitting it consistently. You're probably going to be bouncing bullets into it. I've tried this one a couple of times with a few different loadouts, and I've never really found it to be all that useful. Um, it seems like it's much more of a hindrance, even when I took it with like a, uh, full ammo burst pistol loadout, I was still running low on bullets so often it wasn't even funny. The ricochet sounds really good on paper, but it just, it doesn't work a lot of the time. It doesn't feel like it's working or not doing that much. Um, it feels like if you wanted something like this, why not just take like Driller's Flamethrower or the Cryo Cannon where it can just hit in, in an AOE? Or better yet, just take the uh, the magic bullets with the revolver and use that as a secondary. I did try using magic bullets with bullet hell, and that was kind of fun to mess around with, but I still felt like I wasn't doing much for the team. I'd put bullet hell in the bottom of D tier. It's, it's probably one of the worst overclocks that I've tried. It's not that great. It's not that consistent. It's, it's really fun to play on low difficulties, but on higher ones, no, not so much. All right, and then our last one here is Lead Storm. This gives you four additional damage on each shot, which is a lot for the minigun. Um, you get no movement speed. You can't be moving, at least easily. You can't be moving, at least in a normal way, with this. You can still move because you can still jump with it, and you can still uh, hook yourself to zip lines and move back and forth with this. So you're not completely immobilized when you're using Lead Storm. As well as there is a little bit of a delay when you're running and firing it, or running it and getting it charged up. You do have a few uh, few steps before the minigun starts firing and where you're locked in place. You also lose your stun chance with this, not completely, but you do lose 15% of your overall stun chance, so going from 20% to 5%, so you're not going to be stunning enemies as often. Um, the, st the stun duration is also halved, so instead of it being a one second stun, it's a half second stun, which can be a little bit annoying. But you're going to be building this all for damage. At least I would assume you would, because that's how I've built it. This one, again, is not bad. Um, it does kind of limit you from what you're running around with. But it's still a pretty decent overall overclock. I would probably put this one... I think I'd put this one into low A tier as well. It's probably not as consistent as a little more oomph, or even gives you the utility of compact feed mechanism. Um, it might not even be technically better than thin drum walls though either. It's a fun overclock and I really like lead storm, but I wouldn't say that it's necessarily better than the other ones. So yeah, this is where I'd rank all of the <laughs> overclocks for the minigun. They've got some pretty good ones, some decent ones, and then some kind of questionable ones that are kind of fun, but not really all that good for actually winning. Uh, so this has been fun. Maybe I'll check out the auto cannon next because I believe I have all the overclocks for that one as well. And I think I have almost maybe I have all of the gunner overclocks. So I might go with them first, then unlock the other ones and uh, make videos about those. So tell me what you thought about this video, where you would rank each of these overclocks and what weapon you would like to see next on one of these uh, tier lists. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. If you're new here, be sure that you get subscribed. That way you get notifications whenever I post any of these videos. 
And I hope you guys all have a great day. I will talk to you next time. Till then, stay cool and bye.